guys, what's up? It's Big Jack Films here, and welcome to another commentary. You guys are getting a few this week. Well, with the flash out last weekend, I figured this would be a good opportunity to talk about the Batman Return of the Dark Knight fan film, which is a storyline comprised of the two reviews of the Tim Burton Batman duology from 1989 to 1992. Uh, so for the next 20 minutes, we're going to discuss what went into the behind the scenes. There's going to be a documentary on the making of it that goes into more depth, but this is sort of an abridged version to give you the overhaul what it took to make this episode. So let's go. So the first thing I must say is that this episode started filming in 2019. It was one of three big projects that happened pre-pandemic, and this was the first one to be knocked off the list, that when we came back in 2022 and things were cleared, we started doing reshoots, and we actually took time to rewrite the script. And uh, it turned out for the better, actually, because when we originally shot it, it was not the same film we started off on. Now, these... Uh, uh, visual titles are meant to represent and homage the Tim Burton films, uh, most notably Bat Batman 89, but for me, I've always been a fan of Batman Returns, it's my personal favorite, and it's also one of my favorite movies. I love Batman Returns. As much as I love The Batman, The Dark Knight, Batman Returns is like peak Batman. It's perfect. Um, it's also a little bit of a nod to Sub-Zero, which is the second animated Batman movie. And the Return of the Dark Knight title stems from the Frank Miller comic The Dark Knight Returns, of course. So the first shot we're seeing of Gotham is actually a shot of downtown Toronto spliced with some stuff from the movie, uh, kind of spliced together in sort of a matte shot. And then this shot of the cars and the traffic was taken over the bridge of Union in between Union Station and the convention center where Fan Expo and Comic Con normally happens. So it was a lot of B-roll in uh, doing these shots. And this is one of the first shots we did in 2019 pre-pandemic, a lot different time, a little era, little did we know. And... For me, Toronto, because I grew up in Toronto, was always Gotham for me in the 90s. So it just added much more of the believability that it was Gotham. And I love the fact that building has the term Oracle on it, because it makes me think Barbara Gordon works in that building. So this was a pickup shoot in 2022, so there's like a bit of a time jump in between. Um, and this bar stuff, uh, I just shot in a bar downtown. I took, actually filmed it on my phone. What's great is my phone and my camera almost have the same quality now, which is insane. This song, Hold Me, Throw Me, Kiss Me, Kill Me, was in Batman Forever, and this is a cover by the Countdown Singers, which I bought a CD from them years ago, and they do good covers. This was shot in my mom's basement, because she has a little stand-up bar. And here we have Amethyst Cosplay as Harley Quinn, one of the best actresses I've ever had the pleasure of working with. When we came back and did rewrites during the pandemic, and we wrote this character in, I said, I have to get Amethyst in this episode. And this was her first time she ever acted in anything, and honest to God, was a pure natural. Never acted, and she just got into the role right away. Now, this news reporter, Tommy Lee D. Williams, a nod to Tommy Lee Jones and Billy D. Williams, who played Harvey Dent, is played by Xandra Productions, a YouTuber who I became acquainted with thanks to indie fan of Fandemic. So, thank you so much, indie fan. Uh, he, I just said, hey, you know, I'm trying to get more cameos in this Batman video. We have it cast at the news reporter to explain what's been happening in, in my version of Gotham. Do you want the role? And he was absolutely great at it. I love the suit he wears. I love the wig. And he did such a good job. We definitely want to do more of this character in the future, especially when we return to Gotham City, because we're not done yet. I'm going to expand more on my take of Gotham, which is a mix of, like, everything I like about Batman. Even that logo that's in the news is from The Dark Knight Returns. That's meant to be a total homage to the comic. And yes, Diet Coke is prominent because of those commercials from 89 with Alfred. It just became a running gag with Batman. And the idea too here is that, the idea is that this version of Gotham, Batman hasn't been seen for a couple of years since the last big crook bust. And yes, we do establish much like Birds of Prey that Harley has broken off with the Joker. Um, the idea too is that because we've established this back in the Suicide Squad review that my character and Harley have had a, a, a p potential relationship. It didn't last too long but it's very, I love this scene so much because it very much reminds me of Casablanca or some of those old Humphrey Bogart video, uh, films where he's the rough and gruff guy who just who went through a breakup and he sees an old flame and he's saying, you know, I'm sorry, it didn't work out, kid, you know, and it's very Casablanca, which is also Warner Brothers, a great movie, by the way. 
But yeah, uh, Amethyst did such a good job in that role that we brought her back in Ready Player One. Like, she's just a prominent character and part of my version of Batman, which I really like. And I love just how Toronto's been going through all this construction that just matches so much. Now, again, a lot of this is a branch, so you're not going to see any of the review, but here is a peak of Batman. I love that shot. We shot that over at the convention center. He was on the balcony, and I just filmed up, and he did that, and it was amazing. And then we cut to Arkham Asylum, which is, we actually got the background plates from an actual uh, mental hospital, because it, it just looked like Arkham to me. And here we have Jack Vaught as Edward Nigma, the Riddler, who is, for some reason, monitoring Arkham's security. He, I guess he made a deal and stuff, and these are little cameos off YouTube of cosplayers who have played Killer Quack, the Penguin, the Man Bat, anything I wanted to use with obscure Batman villains, but Jack does such a good job as the Riddler, um, because I needed somebody to be, and I saw his TikToks, so I said, hey, you want to be the Riddler? And he's like, oh, absolutely. So Jack has provided playing the Riddler and the Green Goblin, and he's absolutely amazing in it. Of course, we have Thomas as the voice of Galvor, uh, obviously making contact with villains from the different fictional multiverses, which is going to set up Ready Player One, where they all show up for the final battle, including the Joker. Now, people wonder, who's the Joker? Uh, it's me. Um, I basically didn't really have time to find an actor to play the Joker, and I've already cosplayed him in the past. So I thought, okay, if I just shadow it and light it, it's hardly noticeable, and I can get any actor later on if I want to get a proper Joker to play him. But my version of the Joker is a little different. One thing I love in my design of him is that his lipstick is very... Um, it's very, it's, it's actually made from the blood of his victims, that he wipes it on his face and he just leaves that as his mark, because I think that just makes him more sinister as, as a villain. Now, I know Joker, the movie, did that somewhat at the end of the film, but I don't count that. This is basically him taking his victims and, like, wiping it on his, for a smile. But yeah, like, that, those eyes and that smile and the glasses just... I love the way Jack interprets Edward Enigma. He's so good at it. And yes, I will at some point go back to Gotham. I have plans to talk about Batman Mask of the Phantasm, and then after that, I might go right into the Schumacher films, because Sean and I are looking forward to talk about those. So, yeah, this, this was a fun production to do. It took me, I think, a total of two months to make. But then, after it came out in July of 2022, I actually got major fatigue. I was so exhausted making it, because it was like two months of night shoots, not enough sleep, a lot of editing, and then I just uh, crashed for a month. It took me a while to recover in between that time, so... It was a huge, crazy hassle to make. So yeah, there's my Joker. I love the way it's lit. And lit. I love the way my eyes, my pupils don't even show. It makes it more sinister. And a lot of that costume I thrifted. I thrifted the gloves, I thrifted the shirt, the vest, the jacket. I've got the whole getup, which is great. And then here we have Sean. Uh, JT is reborn doing a quick little perfect cell cameo because he's part of Gabor's uh, Disciples of United Alliance of Evil. And announcing that, yeah, there's the whole cliche of, like, why does the Joker have to be in every single one of these goddamn things? It is contractually obligated, and I just... And that's not even a contract. That's just the script. It just looked enough like a contract that it worked. Now, when I was shooting all the stuff in Toronto in 2022 for pickups, luckily enough, that night, when I was shooting on the balcony, there was a huge awards party going on down in the convention center, so this was good to add to the story... Uh, that there's this whole party by Wayne Enterprises happening. Simultaneously, there was a Jays game going on that you could hear the cheering. There was helicopters. It was crazy that night making that. It was insane. So it just, it was perfect timing on that. Uh, now that corner shot was down in Chinatown. I just filmed a little area that looked kind of creepy. And then here is in my parking lot with a little van. And yes, that is me playing a goon. Anytime we didn't have a spare actor, I would step in and just put on a mask so it's less recognizable, but it does work. I love that his shirt says, I have no superpowers. That's the same shirt that Evan wore in Kong as one of the sailors. So we did keep a little Easter egg props there. Now coming up is also Amethyst cosplay as Catwoman. We originally had a, a different for an actress to play Catwoman, which was uh, Returns cosplay. Uh, it was a couple that do both a great Michael Keaton Batman and Michelle Shell Fight for Catwoman. Now, unfortunately, at the time, they were doing repairs on their costumes, so I didn't have a Catwoman, so Amethyst said, hey, I'll do it. So we did this one shot on her balcony at her apartment, which was way high up, on the sort of, up, and like, and it looked great. It was right at the peak of sunset, so it was like the perfect lighting, so it's almost like Gotham's about to peak sunrise sunset. It's hard to tell the dynamics. You could tell I'm in Gotham for a couple of days. These shots were done in 2019, uh, early on, 
And then this whole bank robbery uh, chase, a lot of this is a little bit of uh, Times Square stock footage I had left over from Kong. And then you have, this was green screen. Now at the time, we didn't want to go to a bank and have guns out because people would probably get the wrong impression. And then these I shot on, the stuff of the van driving was stuff I shot on a, a, a subway, or not subway track, the streetcar. And I just put it next to the window and I got these great shots of certain vehicles. And it was great, I had to make sure it was a GMC. Now these GMC we borrowed from a family friend who was catering. This security guy I just met on my Toronto travel said that you want to do a cameo and he was up for it. Really great guy. But the van we borrowed was actually from a catering department that my mom's friends with, so she called them up and said, hey, can we borrow a van? And we shot all that stuff within a night, and I was running around, jumping in the van. It was piss-pouring rain. I could have died, but it was really fun. I think the rain added to the atmosphere. That shot was done with uh, Brad holding the camera uh, behind the car, and I was running, and Josh was driving, so we did the shots like that similar in the Back to the Future episode where we filmed the DeLorean. And that was also Brad holding the camera just in that quick little shot, and it really worked well. And then we have uh, Peter Garaz as Harvey Two-Face. This, he, I put out a casting call, and he put out the role right away. He did such a good job. That's me and Zach shooting machine guns in the back of the car without it moving. It's just my mom shaking the camera. And that's me legitimately jumping in the van. Legitimately jumping in. I could have slipped and fall and scraped, but no, I was pretty good with that. Uh, so Peter came in to do the audition, and he was great, and then it was also our first time using makeup, the costume, the suit was just a burnt half of a suit, but he was all, he was so into the character, he provided everything I wanted with Harvey Two-Face, which is the split personality, which is something the movies never did. We shot this in the back of his car, there's like, we had to tighten it, so it all, we shot in different vehicles, but it all worked out, it all looked like the same vehicle, which actually matched so well with what we were shooting. So we just shot that for a day. And there was a moment we were filming and I said, okay, just pretend you're driving crazy. And he actually drove pretty crazy. And I was thinking, we're gonna get arrested. A lot of this was hands down guerrilla filmmaking and I love the coin flip. Um, that coin was actually from the Kenner Batman Forever Two-Face figure, which I thought would be worth a fortune if I had to rebuy it in the box, but actually it wasn't, it was 20 bucks. Now, this stuff with the Batmobile. The Batmobile, we wanted to get uh, Brampton Batman with his car, but at the time he was really expensive to get and it was way past our budget. So a lot of this stuff was actually on YouTube, thankfully some really good shots of the car that we just kind of color timed and cropped and it worked out really well and it made the chase kind of work actually. And then I would just add digital stuff with like bullets and stuff fly by. And now we have uh, uh, Todd uh, Bennett as Batman Bruce Wayne. I uh, met him at Comic-Con a couple of years ago, and he had an amazing old-school Keaton suit. And I said to him, hey, we're going to do a Batman project. Do you want it? And he says, oh, absolutely. So then the pandemic happened. We waited a couple of years, but he was dedicated enough to do it. And he did it, and he did a great job. Now, that is actually me on the back of the van in the bat suit because we couldn't afford stunt doubles. And anybody who would have done it themselves, I was afraid they were going to get hurt, so I braved the elements and said, okay, if anything happens to this, the captain's going down with the ship, let me hold on to the van. And that, that little uh, grenade thing is actually just a speaker I just attached to the back of the van, just got a little shot. I love those grapple gun shots you see in the films as well. Now this shot's with the van collapsing and the explosion stuff, that's actually a model made from a Playmobil uh, vehicle that I painted and added sparks and everything, but it came out pretty good. I like the cheap factor of it. Um, so there was a lot of jumping and running and stuff. It was really cool. So, yeah, Todd came in, and he was such a good sport at it. And after we finished shooting, he said to me, you know, this reminds me of stuff I used to do back in the 90s, because Todd's like 50-something, so he's like the perfect age to be that Keaton Batman. We did The Flash before The Flash. And he said afterwards, man, I had such a good time. I definitely will do this again. So he's up for being Batman whenever we need him, and he's just so good in the role that he's such a good sport about it. I love the guy to death, really good actor, and he just portrays the Dark Knight so well. Like, look at this shot right here. That shot is beautiful. Um, now, the actors we have, the goons in the background, we were filming in this alleyway near my apartment, and these guys were watching us, and they said, hey, can we help? And they came down, and we just put them in these outfits, and we shot these little rough little fight scenes, and I was directing it the whole time. And, you know, I paid them dinner and stuff afterwards. You know, I figured my actors, extras, volunteers to come in should get teamed up somehow. 
Hey, yeah, I've always wanted to do something like this, because when I was a kid, I always related to Robin. So I'm kind of Robin in this case. There was a deleted uh, scene we never shot where, after we beat up the bad guys, I turn to Batman and say, No, I'm not going to be your your next Robin. That's not happening. I wish we kept that in, though. That was a good joke. So all this is obviously meant to represent the fights you see, and like that's supposed to be like Batman v Superman. Uh, there's some stuff of '89. Some of those close-up punch shots are based on like the the old filmation cartoon. I love the fact that there was a great batarang throw green screen effect I found on YouTube that worked really well because I didn't know how the hell we were gonna do batarang shots uh, in that in, in that in that piece. <laughs> And yeah, this stuff was great. Obviously, the whole Phantom of the Opera thing of him hiding his face was great. And uh, this is what I love about, about Two-Face. He's actually being that character. He's doing the split person personality that the movies are too scared to do, and it's very Gollum-based, essentially. I love the whole thing of him flipping the coin, Batman throws the battery, and then that and catches it midway. So, And the thing is, the flip side actually turns to heads, which means that Two-Face lived. And this makeup, this was the first time I ever did makeup in a video, and it, we used latex, we used uh, uh, face makeup, like face paint, and it came out really well. I'm impressed how well this version of Two-Face was. And, and Peter just did such a great job playing this character, he just channeled it. Definitely want to get Harvey back at some point. He, and I love the fact that he has two different pistols. One's black, one's silver to represent the personalities. The theatrical elements of the original Batman movies is something that they don't really do anymore, and I really miss. Those, like, sort of theatrical elements in the design. Now, this model explosion uh, was a miniature on a table, and we just lit it up with fireworks. I bought a bunch of fireworks on Victoria Day, stocked up. And I put a little gasoline, and I filmed it with two different phones with uh, slow motion. And this came out really damn well. I'm impressed with these effects, with these explosions. And I definitely want to do more miniature stuff like this, because this shit's kind of fun to do it all practically instead of uh, digitally. Now, the way it ends, uh, this again was a shot in 2019. Um, the way it ended was kind of thing, you think, okay, where's Batman? Where's Two-Face? Well, Batman fled, dropped me off by a nearby emergency thing, as you see those, uh, those uh, fire trucks over there, which was perfect. And then I pick up the coin, and it's heads, which means that Two-Face survived. And I like that element because it shows that he is still out there. He's still around. And people ask, well, what happened to the coin? I gave it back to Batman. I, I did give it back to Batman because I figured, hey, you know, he needs it. You know? Uh, the ending is very much a nod to 89, the way it ends with the music and so on, the way because when Vicky Vale leaves and so on, uh, is all good. Now, at the time, I also made this. Okay, th these shots were at the same big events. There were a lot of cops, so I thought, okay, I'll get some shots of the police because that'll add to the, the elements of Gotham. So, when we shot this, this was long before, I think, Flash, the Flash movie was going to include Michael Keaton. We didn't know what they were going to do with it, so I thought, well, I've always wanted a third Batman, so let me do it. So I did it, and then they announced The Flash, which is one of the reasons why we had to do reshoots and rewrites on the script, because I had to make sure I didn't fuck up what they were doing with the, the Flash movie coming out. And so a lot of it's just sort of, this is my Gotham City, my own interpretation of it, which we will expand on later on. The bat signal shot was, again, on the same night all that crazy stuff was happening, because simultaneously through the parties and the Jays game and so on, there was a full moon with the clouds, and I got those shots, and I added the bat signal, it looked great, and that shot of Batman is actually me on green screen in slow-mo on top of the building, so I framed the camera right by the moon with the building, knowing I was going to put Batman there, so those shots of the bat signal came out really damn well. Um... The credits I did myself, obviously these are from the other two episodes, uh, and then the post credit scene was obviously meant to uh, bring out the tease that, yes, the Justice League would show up at some point, we are not done with this era of Gotham, we're not done with this world of Batman, I'm definitely going to explore it later on. And on top of that, um, we, we just thought it was fun to just do a scene that was right out of like Batman Begins or something. Uh, and it was really cool to shoot that scene. I the only thing I wish we could get was the bat signal. I know the uh, ha uh, there's those um, those hack guys who actually do make legit props from stuff. Like they're making a real Iron Man and a real lightsaber. They did make the bat signal, and they do have the prop, and they're based in Ontario. I wish I could have gotten them. Maybe next time, if if I could get a hold of them to let us use the bat signal, that would be great. Now. 
a lot of the music uh, was used from the Tim Burton films. They were covers. But also there's a lot of the animated series, which is also one of my favorite scores of Batman. Shirley Walker's score is amazing. Now, again, what's funny is when Todd did that jump, I was afraid because, you know, the guy's like 50-something, but he, like, was jumping around, and I was afraid he was going to break a leg or something, but he was a real pro about this. And this is the, this was basically the last thing we shot, and afterwards he drove us home, and we also shot some stuff of Ready Player One in his car, which was good. But uh, these shots, um, after we shot, he said, you know, I really liked what you did here, man. I want to do more of this with you. You're a great director. It really reminds me of when he was gay, because he used to do these kind of Batman fan films back in the old days on, like, VHS cameras. And I'm saying, oh, man, do you have any of this footage? And he says, I don't know. Like, even that mask he has is from 1992. It is old school Batsuit looks. Like, I, my cowl doesn't look that good. Um, now, this is also meant to set up that the fact that Batman has the technology to create the juice that powers the fictional dimensional transporter. I do love those shots of him lit with, like, sort of the silhouette with the light below him. So, yeah, it's established prior that I did get him all the stuff he needed for the suit, um, which was really cool, all the stuff he needed to build, them, to build the juice. So that was enough of a dosage to help us out for the battle, but then later on he gave us a huge supply. Plus, it's said that Bruce Wayne did give me extra money and funding to survive while I was off-grid. It is stored in my power glove for extra keeping so I could get home, because if I didn't get that juice, I wouldn't have been able to get home. That's part of the plot point. I do love that that kind of like shake hands. It's awesome. This pure dynamic duo. Um, yeah, just Todd's just a great guy to play Batman. You might want to get in touch with the League. It was cool to kind of tease the Justice League and know that this Batman has been with the League, but he still patrols Gotham and he prefers being in that field. And then this jump, he didn't really jump off the building. He just jumped off a platform nearby. Uh, but yeah. That's it on Batman. I hope you guys enjoyed this commentary. I had a really fun time making this. Thanks to the cast and crew and everybody involved. And I'll see you guys later. Until then, Big Jack Films signing off for now.